hit it, hit it, smoke it till we're stupid, stupid, twist it, twist it, hit it, hit it, smoke it till we're stupid, stupid, twist it, twist it, hit it, hit it, smoke it till we're stupid, stupid, twist it, twist it, hit it, hit it, smoke it till we're stupid, stupid. You are now listening to a Power Requires Hustle production. What up, world? This King called The Rapper, and I'm hanging out in the Rabbit Hole studio tonight. It, uh, my guest for the evening is, uh, I guess, comedian and rapper, Rockward. Is that an um, uh, uh, honest way of introducing you? Yeah, that's true. And, and human being. Let's not forget that. And he, well, I mean, that goes without saying, but you never know. Um, there, there may be a rap artist that happens to be a non-human being form, so we won't be those people. Um, but anywho, so um, you have uh, t- two albums that are published. You've got some singles. One of your singles is, su- well, a lot of them are super dope, but one of them stood out to me as the, the Christmas bop was 100% rockin' dope. Um, I loved it. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, that's, that's one of my favorites. I love Christmas, and I yeah, I worked really hard on that song. Like That, that beat is one of my favorite beats I've made. Yeah, oh, dude, it's super sick. And you actually have a couple Christmas songs, which um, jumped out to me as, man, that's really dope. Um, do you intend on putting out a Christmas album eventually? I do, yeah, I do, I, yeah. <laughs> that's I love, so cool. I, you know, people hate Christmas music, but I'm not one of those people. I, like, I start playing it as soon as Halloween's over. It's my shit. <laughs> you know what, man? I think it's just one of those things where, like, people are just, um, it, it's become like a, a thing where oh society doesn't like Christmas blah blah blah, but um <laughs> it, you know society spends more money on Christmas every single year more money and more money and more money. It doesn't matter if we can't get to the fucking stores, you know we'll order the shit online and then the post office can bring it to us. You know it's um it's just yeah, one that, of those weird things. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, but look, there's not wrong with liking Christmas. Christmas is mad dope. It really is. Um, I just thought it was super cool when when I looked up your stuff and was checking out your catalog. I was like, man, this guy's got Christmas hits, and dude, they they they're knocking. Like the the Christmas beat was so so uh, so popping, it was unbelievable to me. And I, dude, I kind of want to hear you rap over it. So like, if you build an album, um, that's a Christmas album, you definitely should include that because it's mad tight. Definitely, definitely will. Yeah. Thank you. So, anywho, man, how old are you? I'm I'm 27 now. Oh, okay. Uh, so you're 27. Um, how old were you when you got into rap music? I mean, ballpark. You don't have to be specific on the date. Yeah. Uh, I think it really started when Eight Mile came out. So whenever that was, you know, because um, I, I had a cousin like four years older than me, and he would uh, he basically forced me to rap battle him after we watched Eight Mile. <laughs> but we would like write down raps and then just like spit them, like record ourselves, like spitting them to each other. Uh, yeah, so that's how that started. It was one of the few things that he peer pressured me into that was actually positive. No, I mean, I can understand that. When I saw the uh, 8 Mile movie, I, w- I actually went to the theaters opening night, and um, it was mad packed. I remember um, they had like three different theaters that were running the same time that they sold me tickets for. So like three different theaters filled for it and it was crazy so um we were in there it was a absolutely packed packed room full of people man and everybody in there was just so into it and like hanging on uh every moment of the movie because it's kind of like one of those really impactful weird movies that will just inspire a whole bunch of people at once and, um, man, a bunch of people started rapping after that movie came out, no doubt. It, it, it really brought the artist out of a lot of people that were like, man, it would be tight as hell to do something like that. So, you know, I can understand that 100%. Yeah, yeah. And Eminem has always been an inspiration for me. He was, like, the first rapper. And, like, a lot of people say I sound like Eminem. Um, but, and I, like, that's flattering to me. I mean, you do kind of have, like, that quirky thing thing about you, but it's not, like, necessarily the flow sound. I think it's more of how you pull um, your words together because it's, like, real quirky and different, and um, you got to kind of be, like, a um, a funny 
charismatic human being to really even think that way because so much of hip hop is like um, fucking toughity tough tough, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and I think it's really tight that you you have that different thing about you. Immediately when listening to your music, I was like, man, this is off the hook different. Super tight, man. The production is just and it's cool to hear that you did some of the production. That is right on magnificent to me that's super tight um, I, appreciate it. I actually yeah it's actually produced the, the whole thing um, oh that's that's really tight that's really it was cool more, mostly out of necessity because um although you say i like i, I i'm a charisma a, a, a charismatic human being yeah um i've actually always like the name rockward comes from me being awkward i'm awkward as shit and I always thought, you know, at some point, maybe I'd meet someone who made beats and, like, they would, like, want to work with me, kind of like, you know, Blue in Exile, Ryan Lewis, and Macklemore, that kind of kind of deal. Yeah. Never. So, eventually, I was like, you know, I just got to I just gotta start making the beats myself, because I always want to be a rapper, but I didn't always want to be a producer. That's that's the, the grunt work for me, but I do find uh, some joy in it now, like, now that I know how to do it. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, because it's, no. it's definitely, like, producing... I just, I literally just recently got into it, and I've been trying it off and on for years, but I just, like, lose faith in it, and then I'm like, fuck it, I don't care anymore, um, and then I just, I always find a producer that's just making stuff that's just right on, and, and exactly what I need it to be, but recently I've really gotten into making, um, video game beats i guess you would call them and uh i mean dude just like you play sonic the the background music you know the stage music that's kind of what i build and i dude i love it i got a buddy of mine that works at sega and he's like man structure this like this and let me know when it's done and you know i'll see what i can do with it and dude i've never had the courage to like send him something but man poof I've been working on it. Uh, yeah, have you ever, ever heard of this producer? His name is Rice C.K.? Um, possibly. Not right offhand, though. Yeah, you should, you should look him up. He, he, I first discovered him because he, he started out sampling video game music. And it's pretty dope. Yeah, dude. I'm a fan of that shit, for real. I like people that can sample well. Um, it's why I like Kanye West so much, man. Like, um, being able to sample is just an art. It is just a beautiful art. And, um, I, I kind of sample a lot of shit. So, you know, a, a lot of my stuff that I make, I actually can't, um, can't sell. Yeah. And, and it's cool, to be honest, because I wouldn't want to rap over it anyways. It's more of like something I would structure and then when I want to sell it to Sega or something then I go back and I okay well where did I get this snare <laughs> where did I get this and that and then you go back and actually structure your own um you know uh instruments from scratch you know to fill in that gap of your boom and your bap that you got from somebody else and and I actually learned that idea from um, Kanye West because he used a studio that Eminem used after Eminem used it and Eminem left the, like this drum sample up on the computer so Kanye stole it or borrowed it all these years and like that was how he kind of figured out his West Coast drum um, patterns that he was doing which I think is really fucking dope so yeah that's crazy that's yeah. cool yeah, super dope. But anywho, so you're 27 years old, and um, I'm 34. And I'll tell you one thing, man. When I was 27, I started making good decisions. Like, for real deal good decisions. I, I started uh, publishing music and actually getting money off of it. Started structuring songs better. Working with um, some more predominant artists than myself. Uh, and, uh, man, I really got out there well. But um, I also met a really good girl, and uh, we started having kids and got married. And, man, 27 changed my whole life. So, um, you know, for all those artists out there that think, oh, you know, I'm 25, 26, 27, and, and the game is uh, getting old for me. Dude, it's not. Um, just because there's a, a whole squad of young people right now that are making outrageous money on music um, doesn't mean that it won't happen for you um, when it's supposed to. You know, Eminem was fuck, 32 maybe when he started really making an outrageous amount of money off of music. So, you know, yeah, 
you know, yeah. 20, 27 is when you're in your, your, your prime, in my opinion. You know, I, I was writing some of the greatest shit at 27. And, dude, I checked out your music, and you really have a, a beautiful way that you build your songs. Your production is fucking flawless. So I was going to compliment whoever produced your stuff, and it just happens to be you. So now we're going to have a host show uh, talking about you and complimenting you. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I no problem. Beats and, uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate the the compliments. Yeah. Okay, so how do you actually build them? Like, what um program do you use to to build your beats? I use Ableton. Okay. Yeah, Ableton. Um, uh, I got it. I got it from a friend. Uh, we might. I don't know if I should say this part. I got it uh, illegally, so I maybe cut that out. I don't know. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, yeah, I got a, I have a friend, uh, a coworker actually, who is into dubstep. So he dubstep beats uh, with Ableton, and he said he had a, a hookup. So he uh, he hooked me up, and it's, uh, I've been making beats on Ableton since then. Uh, the first ones were really shitty, uh, but you know, stuck with it. Uh, I started by by like what you said. I started with the sample for the first thing I did, and I just removed the sample. And yeah, that's how I I started building them too. Yeah, that's when I first. That's when I got the first song on my first album. That's that's what. I... Okay, well, let me ask you something. When you um first started building, okay, when you um started building your beats, you said that it was kind of out of uh, need more than it was the desire to build them. Um, did you eventually start to grow over time? More of a knack for it, more of an understanding and a love for actually producing the songs from scratch yourself yeah i do i love it now it's yeah it's, and it's liberating in like like how i can structure the song however i want i could lift the, the an instrument wherever i want and i like having that freedom of being able to do that type of stuff so yeah now i'm really into it uh it's still difficult at times and then there's some days i get up and i'm just like melodies are just hitting me and i'm like i, I can play it pretty easily and then other days, I'm trying to think of a drum pattern. I'm like, all these drum patterns sound like stuff I've done before. So sometimes it's it's the it's a struggle, and other days it's it's really easy. So yeah, I mean, you know, when I was uh, growing up, uh, music became a, a love of my life, like really fast. Like, and um, I always wanted to have something to do with it, but never really knew what my knack was until I I got a little older. And then um, I started really working on music. And um, the first producer that I ever bought beats from ever was um, Stir Crazy, who's now, um, he makes beats for Twisted now, and he's signed to Magic Ninja. And um, Jesse, was, uh, we go so far back that um, he had to send me beats on CDs in the mail. Because there wasn't a program for you to zip it down and transfer it over the internet yet. Um, oh, well. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, wow, right? But, um, <laughs> you know, it, we go back that far with music. And, and to think of all the producers that I've worked with since him, and then it comes full circle and I'm working with him kind of now. Um, it's just one of those beautiful things where um, uh, I don't know if you build instrumentals for other artists yet or if that's like your thing but dude a lot of guys will get deep into music you know release some albums and then they decide hey i can make a lot of money doing this you know for other people and and like they kind of take like that back burner approach to making a lot of money um i know dr dre ended up doing that and uh, a smorgasbord of other artists do. Um, are you one of those guys that makes beats for other artists? And, or have you done that before? I, I haven't yet. Um, I don't know. I just, I'm too attached to the beats. You know, I make them and I'm like, I want this. This is mine. Oh, you know? yeah. But, I mean, because, I mean, you build it from like your perspective of what you would want is yeah. really what it boils down to. So, like, when I make a video game beat, I'm like, man, when I get this far into the stage, I want it to, to change like this. 
And then, um, I don't know, I'm just weird like that. But I, I, it's cool to know that other artists are too, where they're like, man, it has to switch up like this, and then I come in this way, and then I can harmony out in this aspect. And um, that's really cool, man. Like, I like uh, building beats, but I personally don't like rapping over my own stuff. At least I don't yet. It's on the to-do list, but, you know, right now I'm just yeah. having the fun of, of structuring them and and building the yeah. shit yeah but, i would uh, like to make beats for other people i just i uh, i need to make a lot of beats because <laughs> i get too attached to, the, to every single one i make but if i think if i make enough i'm gonna be like there's no possible way that i can use all of these so you know what man i said that but there was one time um i guess it was it was th four years ago i was building a, a big uh production kind of folder up where I was just getting beats from a bunch of different producers and just paying paying a decent amount of money for these these program files, and um, there was just one guy that I bought every beat he had, and um, oh, yeah. I just bought a I bought a lease for every beat he had. He had like four hundred beats or some shit, and I I leased them all. And uh, man, we went through and structured songs for every single one of those beats whether it was awful or not not that the beat was awful but like some of them were like metal beats and some of them were like goddamn near bluegrass beats so it was like man there was like uh, miles of of distance in between uh, what the categories were and the genres. But, man, we were able to build little songs off of every one of them and kind of, like, throw them in the vault. That way, if we wanted to pull an idea for something, we could. And um, I mean, so, you know, you might say, hey, if I have 400 beats, there's no way I could use them all. But, man, if you're attached to them, you'll end up using them for something for sure. Yeah, probably. You're probably right. Yeah, and, I mean, it's good to have all those lines in the ocean too man look at it as every one every one of those songs that you publish and have out there published uh making money man that's just another hook in the ocean waiting to land a big ass fish you know definitely yeah definitely. i mean that's why i publish so much i mean i put out two albums last year and i'll put out another one in march and um i'll probably release another one in winter and um, I promise myself every time that, like, okay, this next one's going to be the last one. I'm going to have a big bunch of shit, and, you know, and then, like, COVID happened. So it was like, oh, well, no way this is going to be my last one because I can't tour. I can't do this and that. Well, fuck that idea. And, um, and dude, it just kept, shit just kept happening and kept getting put off. So um, now instead of doing tours, I interview people. And it's funny, funny how life goes. Yeah. Let me ask, how many songs do you usually put per album? Um, originally, I would do between 15 to 17, and I don't even fucking know why I did that, you know. Um, I just wanted there to be a whole lot of content, you know, like 54 yeah. minutes or more was what I was trying to do. Um, yeah. Now, with this new one, it's shorter. It's way shorter because I want to put it on vinyl. You know, and that's just going to be a cool fucking new direction yeah. to go, you know. Yeah, I love vinyl. I actually collect a little bit of vinyl myself. I do too, which is why I want to do it, because I think it's going to be the shit, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, so look, when you go to a store and you see they got vinyls there, what do you look for when you get vinyls? Uh um, I actually, I like, like, the colored vinyls, like, or anything has a limited edition, you know, that's kind of, that's what draws me to them initially. Okay, so um, something that pops, something that's like, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it gives it more of, like, a, a collector's, uh, you know, value to it if it's, if it's, like, rare. You oh, know? yeah, 100%, I understand. I got a buddy of mine that, um, rolls around town all the time with a motherfucking trunk full uh, vinyls that he, he just is always buying and selling vinyls so he'll roll up to my workplace he'll be like bruh come out check out the vinyls i got in the trunk and i'll go out there and do the, it almost every time i end up buying a bunch of shit from him and um yep. but man i've gotten some cool shit like some really cool shit some goody mob uh promo um you know uh radio station exclusive shit 
that I was able to get because um, he used to work for a radio station way back when DJing. So. Hey, that's awesome. Yeah, cool. oh, fuck yeah, man. You just never know what you're going to find, you know. You got to look for it to, to find them treasures in the rough, you know. But, um, yeah, you you ever try to do any, uh, like, DJing with a turntable? Oh, hell no, man, nah. You <laughs> know what? I, I I have a couple buddies of mine that are phenomenal DJs, like, real deal, wonderful DJs, but um, that's just not my cup of tea, man. But I respect anyone that can do it, no doubt, because it's, yeah. uh, it's a tough little thing to get into. And, uh, it, I mean, with me mixing and mastering and doing this podcasting shit, and I'm producing stuff off and on, and I do not have time to learn to spend 18 years figuring that shit out. Like, that's a whole nother deal. Yeah, definitely. It's something I've always wanted to try. But oh, yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, with you producing on the level that you do, you almost have to get into it, you know, for the, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And it would yeah, be it'd sweet. Yeah, some, like, bit scratches to a song, you know. Exactly. Like that. That's what I was going to say. It would be cool if you had a vinyl of your own shit, and then you scratched over your own shit onto your own shit to give it, like, that fucking... <laughs> extra deep layer um, hey, that would that'd be really tight yeah that'd be cool yeah uh, sample yourself you know what I'm saying? yeah that, that'd be cool as hell yeah. yeah but anywho so um you're two hours away from me um where are you at in the world uh i'm in uh i'm in california southern california okay that's what i thought okay so yeah. southern california music scene um, how has COVID affected it? Is it all fucked up like it is in Indiana? Uh, well, to tell the truth, I'm more on the comedy scene. Like, the music, I, I've never been on tour for music, but I, I've done a lot of sh comedy shows. Oh, uh, that's cool, man. That's actually, I got a buddy of mine that does a similar thing where, like, he's kind of way more in with the comedy shit, way more deep in with it, but, like, he raps, too, and I, and it's just weird for, like, when we link up, he's always asking me about rap shit, and I'm always asking him about comedy shit because we have similar friends, but, like, just on those different paths, but, anywho, so, Southern California, you do a lot of the comedy stuff, um, have you done any gigs in any particular places that you need to shout out, or any, um, clubs that you want to mention? Uh, you know what, yeah, I want to shout out the Fourth Wall, that's, that's a place I open mic at a lot, and, uh, yeah, I mean, they've been instrumental to my progress, them, and also Burt's Back Room, uh, unfortunately, it's closed now, but, I mean, meant a lot to me. That's uh, cool, those are, those are my open mic spots that I'm really into. Um, as far, I mean, the comedy store is an amazing place. I started out, I started doing bringer shows there, so uh, I always have loved the comedy store. That is um, Polly Shore's family's place, right? Yes. yes. Okay, I, w I was pretty sure that's what it was, man. I actually, ironically... A sidebar, I asked Polly Shore to do the show and he didn't hit me back, or at least his uh, his, uh, his uh, manager person, his publicist person didn't hit me back. So, um, anywho, back to you. Just thought that that was funny as hell. But, um, yeah. anywho, let me ask you something. How is the comedy store? Is it a good gig, cool place? It's, it's a great place. It's, uh, I mean, when I got in there, uh, I was doing uh, bringer shows. I don't know if you know what a bringer show. I mean, sure, it's the same thing with with doing a rap show, right? That, that bringer shows is the same concept where you like you gotta bring people to see you. Like, oh, you I mean, yeah, stuff. you gotta sell tickets or you can't open. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's the same thing. Yeah, you gotta have like a, a minimum, like a minimum of five, ten people coming to see you, or else you can't get up, right? Yeah, uh, and you know what's crazy in pro wrestling? It's kind of like that too. And, yeah. and, like, starting out, it's, it, you know, if you don't draw, you don't get on the card, buddy. That's the way it goes. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So I, I did a lot of the bringer shows there. But uh, after a while, I started to feel bad at the expense that my, my friends were having to pay to see me. You know, because it's not only the ticket to get in, the two drinks, and also the parking. So, I, although I love that place, it's honestly the best place I've ever performed. And if I could only perform at one place, it would be that place. Uh, I started like doing some other places because the parking was free and some place and some places don't charge the two drink minimum. 
So yeah, I mean, whatever, man. I feel you, you know. And and sometimes it's just cool to um switch a location, you know. That change of scenery. Um, I dude, I'll be honest with you. I'll I'll do a bunch of shows in my hometown, and spread them out like four of them a year. And uh, I'll do them literally five miles away from one another, and like people still come out and check it out. It's just you. Sometimes you just need that change of scenery because people get tired of being in the same club, dealing with the same bartender, the same bouncers and, and club owners, and you know they just want to want a different area. You know what I'm saying? A different a different scene. You know. Definitely. Also, I, I forgot to shout out. I want to shout out Big Shots. In Palmdale, is it Palmdale or Lancaster? Let me. Lancaster. In Lancaster, my bad. <laughs> uh, big shots in Lancaster. That's uh, a place that, that I've been up a few times and had a really good experience. Also met my current girlfriend there. So. Uh, that's cool, man. That that's that's a beautiful memory to have for real. Okay, so hold up. You met your girlfriend at a comedy club? Yeah. Oh, bruh. I bet she thinks she's extra funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's tremendous. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> that's great. No, man, that, that's a beautiful thing, though, because um, uh, if you're if you're able to to meet somebody and you guys click, and she already knows, hey, you're a comedian, so you gotta be out on the road doing shit and around people and whatnot. If she understands entertainment from the get go, it's a lot easier than having some normal chick that you gotta explain shit to, and she's just mad pissed off that you're busy all the fucking time and <laughs> yeah no my girlfriend's mad abnormal <laughs> no that's cool you know yeah definitely <laughs> no, yeah, she thought, yeah, she, yeah it was yeah, it's a really yeah it was a good place to meet definitely because that, that's always the hardest part with even like meeting anyone I'm just telling them that i'm pursuing rap or comedy it's like i feel like there's some judgment there but like she was she already saw me like in the act you know so oh. i didn't have to say Bruh, like, let me tell you something. Like, when you get to the level where, you're like, you're going into banks and you have some money and you buy some houses and you got some equity, you know, you walk into a bank and they ask you what you do for a living and you're like, yo, I make music. And then they're like, well, what kind of music do you make? And, bruh, I will straight up lie to these motherfucking wealthy people. And I'm like, oh, I mix and master and produce music for people. And 99.9% .9 of people have no idea what the fuck that means at all. But if you say you're a rap artist, they give you that under-the-collar snicker, and I can't stand it no more. So now I'm just like, yo, I mix and master music for people and produce. And they they don't know what the fuck that means, but they know I have houses and money. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah, I'm glad it's so relatable. It is. Uh, it's a hundred percent relatable, man. But you know, it, being a comedian. It, I've got a buddy of mine that's a, uh, an amazing comedian, and I go to a bunch of open mic shows with him and just check out his stuff. And um, he does this really, like, there's like five different types of comedians, but the type of comedian he is, he's like the awkward, quieter comedian. So, like, his stuff kind of, like, takes a minute to dig in, and then, like, you're laughing for a while type thing. You know, and I then you... you I think that's how I was at the start. Uh, oh, I think everybody is. They're that more shy thing at the beginning, you know what I'm saying? And then they open up and start to figure out, hey, really, it's the, the first couple of people that come in and try to razz you and you got to just dig into them with like your mama jokes and shit <laughs> like you really got to cut your teeth with those pieces of shit you know once you get those couple people out of the way then you're like more confident and you're more witty about it and then you're ready to take on the world and then you look forward to those punk asses coming out and trying to say something negative um, yeah. It's no different with rap music too, man. When the the fucking rappers that come out and stand in the parking lot and they're rapping, you know, and doing their thing while you're inside making money, and they're super up in their feelings about it, you know, um, it's it's a similar hatred, you know. Like, don't bother yeah. me while I'm doing my shit, you know. Is really what it boils down to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, with you. You've uh, been me making music for a while. 
You know, it, it sounds great. Production's fucking way, way over the top flawless, man. Like, I don't even know what pointers I would give you to help you get out there further because, like, it really sounds like you got a lot, you know, figured out. And um, your, your, your album art is dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, one of them kind of has, like, a Kanye feel to me, and I really like that. You know, simple is enough in a lot of aspects, you know? And yeah. um, and really, man, I hope that you put something out on vinyl, because I feel like your music would really sound over the top on a vinyl, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, I would love to put maybe the next one on vinyl. It has to be shorter, of course, you give me that pointer. <laughs> or you um, do a double album, you know? You can do that with vinyl. It's a little more expensive, but um, if you're going to pay for vinyls to get made, you're forking up money anyways, unless you get one of those companies that um, just handles it and then they give you a cut, which is a beautiful thing, too. You can get a deal like that through um, TuneCore with um, Amazon Music for physical copies. So, little insider information there for you. You know what I'm saying? All right, I'll definitely look into that. Thank yeah, you. definitely. But anywho, man, so um, do you have an upcoming uh, upcoming album you're going to release? I know you released one in October of 2020, I think it was, maybe November? November, yeah. November, um, yeah. Um, I don't have, uh, like, an album title or anything or, like, a concept for an album, but I've been, I'm still making music. I've made, I've made, like, a few songs that will be on the next project because I like them. I like them that much. I'm sure they'll make it to the next project. So no title yet, but I'm still working. Yeah, I mean, dude, I do the same thing where I'll get like three or four songs that are really tight. And then like by the fifth or sixth song, I'm like, all right, now I know what, what direction I want to go with this. And then you kind of figure out like the concept art and what yeah. the, the whole background idea of the album is going to be, like as a Eureka thing, like you're getting out of the shower and you're like, oh, fuck, that would be tight. Or sometimes you work with an artist and collaborate with them and then you guys build a song that's really tight. And then you're like, oh, well, we'll build the whole, the whole album after that, you know, energy, yeah. you know. Yeah, I definitely want to get some uh, some collabs on this album this next album oh dude um, i was gonna ask you who are you wanting to collaborate with like who is an artist that you're like gosh darn it by god i got i gotta work with this son of a gun uh i mean little dicky would be awesome i love little dicky yeah uh, he's tight he's tight as hell yeah uh, yeah his pen game is insane um i mean token's really good i like token a lot corday is good uh, Hobson, I love Hobson. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot, a lot of those people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do. Uh, I have some more artists I want to collab with too. Um, uh, but I'm already in talks with them, and that's will be dropping soon. Well, look, I, I'll be honest with you. When I did my first major collab, I reached out to probably a hundred artists, literally a hundred artists, to work with me. And uh, the mass majority of them were busy and on tour and had shit going on. But, dude, I got lucky. And I reached yeah. out to Jelly Roll. And um, right. a buddy of mine was a buddy of his. And um, a guy that produced some music for me made something for him way back when. So I was able to um, link some, some chains together. I was able wow. to work with Jelly. And I worked with him on two projects and um a music video so uh dude you just got to keep keep reaching and keep digging out there and asking your your friends in music who they know you know um on my first album the guy that mixed and mastered the majority of it was the guy that worked on nelly's heart of a champion album and um it was on his suit and sweat album that went platinum so i got to work with him and it was just a blessing that Somebody I knew happened to know Phil Duckett, you know, so I was able to work with him. So, dude, you would be surprised how many people you know through another person. It's called um, the Six Circles of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> like, <laughs> like somebody you know, that somebody you know, somebody you know, somebody you know, somebody you know, somebody you know knows Kevin Bacon type shit. 
<laughs> and and it's so true because I know a buddy of mine that sat on a plane next to Kevin Bacon for a whole <laughs> a long ass plane ride and they ended up becoming like email buddies or whatever the hell. So like everybody knows somebody eventually down the road that can link you up with somebody, you know, the six circles of Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Yeah, it's real shit. It really is. But look, man, um, so you've got this project that you're working on. You don't know what it's going to be called. You know, you got a couple songs into it that you know are going to end up on it because they're dope. I assume that you produce the songs too, right? Yeah, yes, definitely. Okay, so, like, it takes you a little longer to build an album because you're doing all of that shit. Exactly. Like I said, I hit up, uh, I hit up someone for, uh, well, someone... Someone I know made a, uh, posted a song on Instagram, a new song that I did. And I was like, when are we going to collab? You know, and they're like, we can do that right now. And I was like, well, shit, now I got to make a whole beat and uh, finish these verses. Uh, yeah, it's like a, it's a whole process. It is. But, man, it, when you build something and put so much work into it, um, a lot of times when my projects are getting built, I'm working directly with the producers. So they'll send me... Um, you know, uh, 16 seconds of a beat, and they're like, yo, how you feel about this? I'm like, that's cool, but do this instead. Or, hey, that's cool, but what if we did this type thing? You know, you 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 want to build something to match up to what, what direction you're trying to do. And, dude, when you're doing it yourself, it's a whole nother ball game. Like, it's literally like, not only am I going to paint a picture but when you're producing and rapping, you're like try, you're mixing paint colors together to figure out what color of purple you want. And then when you find out what color purple you want, you have to figure out what in the fuck you're going to write on top of purple to make it sound dope. Like it's really deep and complex and it's hard to explain to normal people. But I respect people that can produce and rap. Um, I really do. Like, the Joker can do that shit. When I went uh, and hung out with him, man, I watched him uh, produce something on a comp uh, on a real piano. Like, this old-ass piano he went to buy from somebody off of fucking Craigslist like three days before I got to L.A., right? So he didn't even know, like, how well it played or anything. He sat down on the motherfucker and straight jammed and then built this melody and then went into his studio and, and converted it into his computer. And bro, it was the craziest shit I had ever seen for somebody to literally just pull a melody out of the air like that and then yeah. build like a beautiful symphony. And dude, that ended up on his motherfucking, um, uh, his, uh, uh. All of the Orphans album. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, dude. Awesome. Yeah, dude. He's a super cool dude. I really yeah, got awesome. lucky being able to work with him. So, look, you're in California, and he is yeah. in Los Angeles. If you ever get the opportunity to make a music video, that is the fucking dude you want to work with. I flew all the way from Indiana to Los Angeles to work with him. That's how dope he is, for real. Yeah, yeah. I feel I um I actually met him, but this is before. I, like, was open about rapping because I've always, like, just that that being judged, you know, like, like we were talking about, like, when people find out that you get that little snicker. Oh, that yeah, me, yeah. That kept me from telling anybody for the longest time. I was like, I just write in my, my own time and, like, just keep it to myself. So, actually, I met Joker on the set of uh, the Hot Madness music video. Hopson did a, he, like, had, like, a, he posted on Facebook, like, who wants to be an extra in the video, just email this, emailed it. And, uh, yeah, Joker actually helped direct that video, so I got to meet him there. He was, he was really cool. Dude, what's crazy about that is they started not liking each other after that. And yeah. I And I went out to work with him after that, and he told me, like, all of the bullshit that they went through. But, like, him and Marcus were really tight, like, really good friends. And um, after a couple years of working with Joker, I was like, man, it's really crazy that, like, Marcus went on to do his own thing, and now me and you were so tight the way that you and Marcus were. And I don't know, I just thought it was a really cool thing to, um, you know, become so cool with such a great artist, a down-to-earth motherfucking person. You know, and um, and do he's definitely an asset for if you want to record something or um, 
you know, if you need to do a music video in California, that is definitely the guy to get a hold of. And if you, for any reason, if you need his contact info, holler at me. I got you. Of course. Awesome, dude. Thank you. Yeah, and, and also, man, if there's anybody you want to work with, like, you know, just holler at me. If I can't get a hold of them, dude, I probably know someone that can. I, I, I do have some, some connections here and there in, in music. But, um, but yeah, great. man, definitely. Thanks. If you, um, when you get to putting out your new album, would you definitely keep me in the loop and, like, send me little parts of it so I could check it out and, and stay in the, the, the vibe with you? For sure, I will, dude. Thank you. I appreciate it for real. Um, do you want to tell your your adoring fans that are listening um, how they can follow you and where they can find you on your different formats? Yeah. Uh, first of all, if you if you want if you want to go to my website, it's Planet Rock. That's R A W K Planet Rock dot Squarespace dot com, and there you can find everything else. But I'll still tell you, my Instagram is at socially rockward, like socially awkward, but with the R before awkward. And my Twitter is social, the letter E, Rockward. And, yeah, those, those are the best places to follow me. You can also listen to my music on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, YouTube it. And also I have a Patreon. And you can get some of my unreleased music, the stuff that has samples and stuff that I can't really put out. You can get it there. You subscribe to my Patreon. Sweet, man. That's awesome. Patreon's one of those beautiful, un, um undiscovered things by a lot of artists and man if they knew how much shit that they can really hub in it they they would take advantage of it more because dude there's so much behind the scenes info um you know backstage shit that you can film and put up there man i really wish i had a bunch of the uh footage of me and joker hanging out and uh when i hung out with uh too high and uh this kid named munchies um Oh, let me tell you a little, real quick, funny-ass story. Um, when I went to Los Angeles, I found out that buying weed in Los Angeles was way, or way different than buying weed in Indiana. All right? <laughs> so, I, so I went out there, and um, I hollered at my buddy. I was like, hey, I'm going to be out here for like four days working on this video. Um, can you, you know, find me some weed? He was like, how much do you need? I'm like, yo, $200 should be straight. I'm like, yo, they'll probably give me a half. Awesome. Bruh, it got me a half fucking pound is what it got me. I thought I was getting a half ounce. So I end up getting like this pillowcase fucking size bag of weed. And it was phenomenal. It was way better than what our weed is here. So, um, I, I had so much of it left over after I, I filmed the video because we were doing like 16, 17 hour shoots. Like I literally ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner with the Joker for three days. <laughs> like dude, we worked and worked and worked and worked. And um, and he doesn't smoke at all. So like uh, it, it was all me for like the six hours I was in my hotel room. So I had a bunch of it left over and I ended up leaving it for the cleaning lady because I couldn't do <laughs> nothing the fuck with it, man. But um, uh, yeah, you guys definitely have good music, uh, good weed and and the beaches are absolutely beautiful in California. Like I was yeah. just blown away by how tight it was. Yeah, I, I love it here. I love it here. It's, it's, you know, I mean, it's my hometown. Yeah. Okay. So you've been in California your whole life. Yeah, I've been here my That's whole life. I haven't sweet. been. Uh, I've only been to New York and Florida and Nevada, besides California. I mean, I, fuck, you've been everywhere that matters, then. <laughs> New York was awesome. I, I gotta say, I love New York. Uh, I, I would like to like live there at some point. You know what, man? I felt the same way about Chicago because when I went to Chicago, it was so big. And, like, I went up there with NBC. So, like, I was flown up there and I got picked up in a limo. So, like, it wasn't like I went to Chicago and fucking roughed it or something. But yeah. um, I went to Chicago and I loved it. But, man, I got this thing about heights 
where they just fuck me up and do walking downtown Chicago in between those tall ass buildings was too much for me. Like it made me so nervous. Like you're walking beside a cliff and you're just waiting for fucking rocks and pieces to fall. That's just how I felt the whole time. So man, I could imagine living in like a big metropolitan area like Chicago or New York for that matter. That's literally four times, five times bigger in Chicago. Like, oh my God, dude. Yeah. But, no, I mean, dude, there's nothing wrong with branching out and, like, hanging out in different spots, meeting people, you know, being able to network is a very important thing, man. You never know who you're going to meet in New York City walking around, you know. Definitely. Yeah. And, um, look, I appreciate you being on the show. Um, I appreciate you reaching out, man. Like, it, Yeah, uh, definitely. It yeah, man, I'm going to um, make sure that I link all of your pages for you. Um, I'm going to um, line out uh, everything that way people can get a hold of you. Um, eventually, we're going to probably have a segment where we um, get a hold of everybody that's a musician that we know and we have them submit music and then we'll end up playing it um, for, for stuff eventually. But we're not there yet. Um, but eventually, I want to do that type thing. And when I do, man, I'll holler at you to be one of the people to submit stuff for it, for sure. Awesome. Thank you, dude. That sounds awesome. Yeah, no doubt, man. Look, you have my number now. That's my cell number. If you ever need anything, man, just holler at me or shoot me a text. I'm pretty available, you know. And um, I'll probably have you back on for season three when we um, start filming it in the fall. Please, I appreciate you. I can't wait. Yeah, man. So definitely have more of your project lined out, and um, we'll shoot the shit about it more for for real. All right. Cool, cool, man. All thank right, you. thank you, my brother. I appreciate you being on. Appreciate you having me. All right, thank you, man. Be safe. You too. All right, late. Late. Sweet man, thank you, Rockward. Like you said, man, definitely um check out check him out on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify. He's one of those dudes that's out there everywhere. You know what I'm saying? It's really happy to have him on the show, man. Great producer, funny fucking dude, great, great, great human being. You know, um, if you want to follow me, King Cold, you can follow me at the Real King Cold on Twitter, at the Real King Cold on Instagram. You can find me on Spotify. Tidal, Amazon Music, Google Play, Xbox, YouTube. I'm everywhere, baby. You can follow me and find my music. Um, also, follow our Power Plays Facebook page. Twist it, twist it, hit it, hit it. Smoke it till we're stupid, stupid. Twist it, twist it, hit it, hit it. Smoke it till we're stupid, stupid. Twist it, twist it, hit it, hit it. Smoke it till we're stupid, stupid. Twist it, twist it, hit it, hit it. Smoke it till we're stupid, stupid. Smoke a You are now listening to a Power Requires Hustle production.